Let's say you want to find the shortest path between two cities, A and F, and there are a lot of different roads connecting them together with different lengths. Now, you can add this data to a graph database and run a query. So the quickest way is 160 miles long, and you must take this specific route to get there. In the second part of the video, I'll walk you through how to reproduce this example step by step locally using one of the most popular graph databases. First, let's talk about how the graph theory was invented almost 300 years ago. In 1736, in Konigsberg, Prussia, now known as Kaliningrad, Russia, a person named Leonard Euler was trying to solve a problem. The city of Konigsberg is actually divided by the river into four sections, which are connected by the seven bridges. The question that Euler was trying to answer was, can we take a walk through the city that would cross each of the seven bridges only once, he realized that the land masses are not as important as the bridges connecting them. In his analysis, he laid the foundation for the graph theory, defining the land masses as vertices and the bridges as edges. These elements formed a graph. Using a graph, Euler was able to demonstrate that there was no way to visit vertices in the graph by traversing every edge exactly once. But it wasn't a completely a wasted effort. Although graphs originated in mathematics, they are also a very convenient way of modeling and analyzing data. While there is certainly value in the data that we hold, it's the connections between data that can really add value. Creating or inferring relationships between your records can yield real insights into a dataset. Fast forward 300 years, and these founding principles are used to solve complex problems, including route finding, supply chain analytics, real-time recommendations, and many more. Next, let's explore graph elements. The two elements of a graph are nodes, also known as vertices, and relationships, also known as edges. Nodes are the circles in the graph and typically represent objects, entities, or things. If you remember from the previous example, the land masses in Konigsberg were represented by nodes and the bridges by edges. Another example that everyone can relate to is the concept of a social graph where people interact with each other and form relationships. Here we see two nodes representing two people, John and Sarah. You can see that entities which can be represented as nodes include things like people, products, events, books, or subway stations. On their own, these elements are uninspiring, but when we start to connect these circles together, things start to get interesting. Relationships or ages are used to connect nodes. We can use relationships to describe how nodes are connected to each other. For example, John has works at relationship with Graph Inc. because he works there. And John has a married to relationship with Sarah because he is married to her. All of a sudden, we know that we're looking at the beginning of some sort of social graph. Now, let's introduce a third person, Robert, to our graph. Robert also works for Graph Inc along with John. Depending on the size of the company and the properties of the relationships, we may be able to infer that John and Robert know each other. If that's the case, how likely is it that Sarah and Robert know each other? Examples of relationships include things like person knows another person, a person owns a car, a person rated a movie, and a person is a parent of another person. Now, let's take a look at the graph structure. First, let's explore undirected graph. In such a graph, relationships are considered to be bidirectional or symmetric. For example, think about marriage in a graph. If John is married to Sarah, it also means Sarah is married to John. In a direct graph, the way the connections point matters. Even if two connections are the same type, if they go in opposite directions, they mean different things. For instance, marriage is two-way relationship where both sides are equal, but love can be one-sided. Two people might love each other, 
but how much they love can be very different. In a directional relationships, you can use a weight to show how strong the relationship is. This way, you can show how much one person loves another. At a large scale, a large network of social connections can be used to understand network effects and predict the transfer of information. Given the strength of connections between people, we can predict how information would spread through a network. Now, the concept of love is also an example of weighted graph. In a weighted graph, relationships between nodes carry a value that represents a variety of measures, such as cost, time, distance, or priority. A basic shortest path algorithm calculates the shortest distance between two nodes in the graph. This can be useful for finding the fastest walking route to the local store or working out the most efficient route to travel from city to city. In this example, the equation we might have for this graph is what is the shortest drive from a to F. Using has road relationships and the distance for these relationships, we can see that the shortest drive would be to start in A, then go to B, then to D, then E, and finally arrive in F. Now, let's say we have to send a package internationally to a different country. In that case, we may prefer to send the package by air so it arrives quickly. So for the weight in this example, we would take into account the time it takes to get from one point to the next. If we want to save money, we might choose to ship the package by sea and use cost as weight property. Now, to answer questions about the data in a graph is typically done by traversing the graph. To find the shortest path from A to F, the application would need to traverse all routes between the two cities to find the shortest one. Traversal implies that the relationships are followed in the graph. There are different types of traversals in the graph theory that can impact application performance. For example, can a relationship be traversed multiple times, or can a node be visited multiple times. Now, let's go over a few of the most common use cases for the graph database. Graph database can be used to prevent fraud. For example, you can use relationships in the graph databases to process financial transactions in near real time. You can detect if a potential buyer is using the same email address and credit card, including in a known fraud case. Graph databases can also help you detect fraud through relationship patterns. For example, multiple people associated with a personal email address or multiple people sharing the same IP address but located in different physical locations are trying to make a purchase. The graph model is also a good choice for applications that provide recommendations. You can store graph relationships between information categories such as customer interests, friends, and purchase history. A highly available graph database can be used to make product recommendations to a user based on which products are purchased by others who have similar interests and purchase histories. It can also identify people who have a mutual friend but don't yet know each other and then make a friendship recommendation. Also, graph databases are well suited for discovering complex relationships and hidden patterns in data. For instance, a social media company such as Twitter X can use a graph database to distinguish between bot accounts and real accounts. They can analyze account activity to discover connections between account interactions and bot activity. And of course, there are route optimization problems. This involves analyzing a dataset and finding values that best suit a particular scenario. For example, you can use a graph database to find the shortest route from point A to B on a map considering different routes, the right employee for a particular shift analyzing different availabilities, locations, and skills, the optimum machinery for operations considering patterns like cost and life of the equipment. Graph queries are much faster than relational databases in these cases because they can count and compare the number of links between two nodes. 
Now let's review some of the most common algorithms. First is clustering. Applications like image processing, statistics and data mining use clustering to group nodes based on common characteristics. Clustering can be done on both inner cluster differences and intra-cluster similarities. Then we have partitioning. You can partition or cut graphs at the node with the fewest edges. Applications such as network testing use partitioning to find weak spots in the network. And then there is search. Graph searches or traversals can be one of two types, breadth first or depth first. Breadth first search moves from one node to another across the graph and is useful in optimal path discovery. Depth first search moves along a single branch to find all relations of a particular node. A graph database should not be blindly applied to every problem you may have. A dedicated graph database provides the most value for highly connected datasets and any analysis that require searching for hidden and apparent relationships. If this doesn't fit your use case, other database types may be better suited. For example, consider the case where you need to keep track of your inventory. You only need to store details like item name and available units. Since you don't need to retain additional information, the columns on the table will not change. Due to its tabular nature, a relational database is better suited for such unrelated data. It is also important not to use graph database simply as key value stores. Looking up a result from a known key does not maximize the function for which graph databases were created. We're going to be using a Cypher query language, which was created by Neo4j, Graph Database, and later open sourced. While you can use online database playgrounds, most of them do not include all the plugins. So I'll show you the easiest way to get started using Docker, but of course you need to install it first. You can follow one of the official tutorials. After you install Docker, you can run docker run command. You can find all the commands and queries in the readme file, the link in the description. We'll be using official Neo4j graph database docker image and using the latest version. Also, we'll map two container ports to localhost. The first one is for UI to run queries and the second one is for that UI to connect to the database. So you need both. Next, we need to install data science plugin that includes the shortest path algorithm and many other and finally, let's disable authentication. It'll take a few minutes to download the image. Then it will install the plugin and provide a remote interface. After that, we just need to go to the browser and open localhost 7474. Since we disabled authentication, we can just click connect. Otherwise, the username and password are Neo4j. The UI is similar to a Jupyter notebook. Let's create our first node. The cipher clause you use to create nodes is merge. After the merge keyword, we specify the pattern that we want to create. Usually, this will be a single node or a relationship between two nodes. In cipher, nodes are represented by parentheses. Each of these bubbles in the graph represents a node. Labels are used to group nodes that have the same general set of properties. In Cypher, we use colon followed by the label to specify the label for a node. In our example, location nodes represent cities or physical locations on the map. Also, both nodes and relationships can contain properties. These properties are used to represent data in the graph. When you create a node, you can specify a property for that specific node. In many cases, you define a particular property that will be used to uniquely identify a node with a specific label. Properties are specified with braces and a set of property key value pairs. In this example, this location node has a name property of A. And lowercase a is just a variable that we set and we can use it in the return statement and other functions. For example, we'll use it later when we need to create a relationship. By the way, return is optional in this case. Alright, we have created a node, 
that represents a city. Next, let's verify that we created a node in the database. To retrieve that node, we use the following pattern. Specify that we want all location nodes and add additional filter to select only the location node with a name equal to a property. Then assign this node to a variable and return it. All right, it works. And we have a single A node. Next, create another node, but add a name equal to B property. You can use the same lowercase a variable or anything else such as b. In this case, we're not going to return anything. Now, you can select all nodes in the graph by using parentheses and assigning all nodes to n variable. Then return it to show it in the UI. So for now, we have two nodes, a and b. Next, let's create a relationship. First, we need to select a node from the database and assign it to the lowercase a variable. Do the same for the second node. Select it and assign it to the lowercase b variable. When we have a and b nodes as variables, we can establish a relationship. Relationships between two nodes are written with two dashes. The direction of a relationship is indicated using a greater than or less than symbol. In this case, the relationship is from A to B. Then the type of the relationship is written using square brackets between the two dashes, for example, road. And finally, we can set a custom property, for example, cost equal to 50, which represents a road length of 50 miles. Optionally, we can search these nodes with our relationship in a database with the following pattern and return both A and B nodes. Now, you can see two nodes and the relationship between them with a custom cost property. This property is very important since we'll use it to find the shortest path. If you were to execute merge code multiple times, it would not create any additional nodes in the graph. This is because merge first looks for the node in the graph and if it does not exist, it creates it. Another way you can create nodes in the graph is by using create clause. When using create, the graph engine will create multiple nodes with the same properties, which is why a best practice is to use merge. In this example, we create multiple nodes of the same type from C to F. Let's return all the nodes again. All right, we have all the nodes, but we still need to create additional relationships. Let me do it quickly in a single statement. Let's select all nodes with match clause and create corresponding relationships with a different cost values. Let's retrieve all the nodes one more time. You can see that all of them are now connected and we can slightly rearrange them to match our initial example. Now, it looks more or less like what we had at the beginning with cost properties. You can create all nodes and relationships in a single query using create clause. Don't execute the statement, it's just an example. For the shortest path algorithm, we need to create a named graph and specify the cost property to be used as weight. And finally, the query that calculates the route. It's a little bit complex to explain and I may create another tutorial focused only on the Cypher query language in the near future. If you execute this query and switch to the tabular form, you'll find the shortest path from A to F and the total cost which is 160 miles you need to travel. Also, you'll see the route itself. You can find other tutorials for columnar, vector, document and other database tutorials on my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.